we confidently and joyfully look forward to the sharing of God's glory. So the darker it gets, I pray that you are more confident and joyful. We can, verse three, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Say, I, I am supposed to rejoice when I run into problems and trials. Isn't that beautiful? Sometimes the problem doesn't get brought to you. You get brought to the problem. How does that hurt your theology? The Lord brought me to that trial and tribulation. Yeah, he dragged you right to it. Led you with his spirit. Oh, I thought the spirit led me there. He did. Yeah, he did. He did. Isn't that awesome that some of the mess that you're in isn't just because you're an idiot. Some of the mess that you're in, some of the mess that you're in is because the Holy Ghost led you right to that mess so he could be the God of that mess right there so that you could grow and learn and be confident and joyful. Ooh, your life could get changed. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. See, when you stop short, you can't get endurance. And when you don't have endurance, you got no character. I just want to build my character. Well, you can't. You stop short. When you stop short, you got no endurance. And the reason you can't keep running is because you stopped. It's not because there was a problem in front of you. It's because you stopped running. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So some of y'all that are questioning your salvation doesn't have anything to do with the salvation. It has everything to do with you stopping short of where God was leading you. Because then you ran out of, you ran out of strength, you ran out of energy, you ran out of fire, and you stopped short. And you thought, oh Lord, I can't believe you left me here. He didn't. He just kept on going. He was leading you right to a trial. And he brought you to a trial so that you could learn to endure a little bit. And once you endure a little bit, like May, what's her name? May Ling? Yeah. See, see, A Ling? One of them names? I think that's so adorable. You always ask me to do that, and I can never remember what I said. That's so cute. 16 years running. We question our salvation, but it's not really about the salvation. See, we're not even at that point. So suddenly you feel like, I don't know that I'm saved or I don't have the security of my salvation. And really the only point is, is that you stopped short of where the Holy Spirit was leading you. And he was leading you to a mess. I want to tell you something. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not positive on this. I'm about 95, 99.5% positive. But I believe the Holy Spirit leads you into a mess more times than he doesn't. Not sin. No, no, no. Sin is you. Sin's you. When I say a mess, a trial, a tribulation, a mountain, and he brings you right to that mountain. But sometimes, what if David saw Goliath and was like, ah, I can't throw that far. <laughs> what if he was just like, I'm just going to try to throw it from here because it's safer over here. What he did, what did he do? He ran at the giant. I want to tell you, when, when you, when you stop short, you don't learn to endure. And when you don't learn to endure, your character doesn't grow. And when your character doesn't grow, you are going to lose your faith of salvation. And see, a lot of times we think that God moved away, but really we just didn't go far enough. See, and I'm serious. Sometimes we think we run away, but really we just don't run too. We're not really running away. I really feel like we just stop. How could you question your salvation now? And no wonder you're so weak. No wonder you're so weak. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Now, don't you just love statements? I love statements by the Lord. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Now, what's the promise there? Yeah, but what's the promise? Salvation, but what's the promise on what he's saying right there? And, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. See, what he's not saying is it's not going to be hard. Y'all ever heard that song? And he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. What's the rest of it? He never, he never promised. Victory without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Right. See, he never promised that it wouldn't be hard. He never promised that the hill wouldn't be hard. What he, what he promised is that you won't, he won't disappoint you. 
And see, when you have the right perspective, you can walk up a mountain, you can grind, you can climb and struggle and get to the top, but he, you'll never be disappointed. But he never said it wouldn't be hard. He never said it wouldn't be a fight. Sin's never going to stop coming for you. Sin's always going to come for you. Satan is always going to try to kill you. There's no level of Christianity that you can get to. There's no amount of Bible that you can memorize. There's no amount of tongues that you can speak that the devil's going to leave you alone. There's no amount of hands laid, no amount of uh, prophetic words given. No mas. There's no amount. None. He's always coming after you. The problem is most people don't recognize that he's coming after you. And when you don't recognize it, you become a slave to the thing that you let in because you didn't recognize it. And I think what Paul's trying to get everybody to see is that you are in a fight. You are in the fight for your life. And it is sin is coming after you. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weaknesses of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins he did this so that at just the he did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature but instead follow the spirit you don't have to follow your sinful nature you don't have to follow your lazy nature you don't have to follow your depressed nature you don't have to follow that nature ever if you do you're a slave to that those who are dominated by the sinful nature, verse five, think about sinful things. Those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. So when you believe, you belong. And when you belong, you start to become more like Him. And so therefore your mind, they used to think about the stupidest things, the most heinous things. Suddenly, it's not that you'll never think those again because the devil's a liar, yes? But suddenly your thoughts don't immediately go to, I'm a miserable failure, condemned to hell. What you do is, I can't believe I'm a saved sinner. I can't believe I'm a son. I can't believe he came. I can't believe that he died. I can't believe that I actually have life and that I have breath. Your thoughts change. I want to tell you, if you're a young believer or you're struggling with your thoughts, I want to tell you, when you believe you belong and when you belong, you become more like Christ. It takes a little bit of time because he's got to refine. When you belong, the Lord brings you to all sorts of trials and tribulations. So that what? What happens? So you're what? Yes, but before that, we read it earlier. He brings you to trials and tribulations so you can gain endurance. And then once you get endurance, by the way, endurance does not happen overnight. Anybody who's ever tried to run, CrossFit. When you started doing CrossFit, when you first started, could you do what you do now? No, I guarantee it. First time I did CrossFit, I couldn't walk for a week. Yeah, I literally could not. It was just like. But some of y'all are like, okay, I believe. So now I belong. The Lord drags you to a trial. You're like, oh yeah, I got endurance. No, 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 you're getting endurance. Oh, I've got character because I did endurance. You didn't finish endurance yet. You can't have the character until you, until you finish the endurance. <laughs> I did it. Now I've got character. You're stuck right there. No, no, no. St get, go back. <laughs> And see, what happens is if you don't pass the test, all of a sudden you're like, I did a character? Oh my gosh, I have so much character. You like turn around, this is like trial, and you're like, what? I did this already. No, you didn't. <laughs> endurance, right here. Start small. That's how you gain endurance. Start small. Don't try to do it all at one time. Start small. And before long, before long, you'll already move without even trying. I'm no longer a slave to sin. He saved me and now he's making me righteous and holy. And then you're going to look up and be like, whoa, whoa, character development. How did I get, I don't know if I signed up for this class. Oh, you passed endurance. You're good. See, because he moves you along as the Holy Ghost leads you. Okay, now I'm in character development. Okay, Lord. Character development's tough. He's going to put some stuff to trip you. Like he's going to tie your shoelaces on purpose. <laughs> to slow you down. Character development takes failing a little bit. Okay, I'm going to memorize. I'm just going to memorize all of Philippians, right? That's all I'm going to do this month. Character development is different than endurance. Character development, right? You're going to have to fail a little bit and then you're going to get questioned a little bit and then your life's got to change a little bit and then the things that you thought and the things that you used to do, you don't do anymore. 
Character development. So that when you get to the next phase and the Holy Ghost leads you to a mountain, once your character is developed, you're no longer looking at a trial and tribulation that you're magnifying. What you're doing is saying, yes, Lord, what's next? Where are you going to pull me? You want me to climb up this mountain? I don't know that I can make it. But if you brought me here, I know you're going with me because you have the character to uphold where he's taking you. Hallelujah. Stand up.